I can't tell if I'm on. Can't tell if I'm on yet. Let's see. Yeah, the lighting works a lot better this week. So how's everybody doing on this Monday? Monday? How the heck are we on a Monday? Ron, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That helps because I didn't know. Lamb, great. That's good to hear. So this is the pre-party. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do that. It's uh, it's winter time here in Southern California. It's raining outside. It is uh, it is uh, it's cold. I'm wearing a sweater. Hey, wait a minute. I'm still wearing the work shirt. I gotta put on the Alliance shirt. What am I doing here? It's an opportunity for free advertising. The night lamp. Hey, I don't think I've seen you on here before. The the night lamp. So thank you for tuning in. This is the Alliance, uh, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com. I am your host, J. Cal. The Alliance is who I am and what we do. Hey, Ron, don't you live in the Pacific Northwest? Doesn't it rain like every single day where you live? I don't mean to sound rude. So guys, what we're doing today is this is the pre-party, the pre-show for NWA Power. If you guys are fans of the NWA, then you are in the right place. What we do is we talk NWA. We talk about the National Wrestling Alliance. We talk about the 10 pounds of gold. We talk about, uh, of course, NWA Power. And when it starts, we'll start talking about the uh, Circle Square. Now, first and foremost, I would like to bring to attention uh, the Twitter handle of Mr. Eddie Shockett, and that's E-D-D-I-E-S-H-O-C-K-E-T, also known as Gordon Sully's Liver. I like Eddie a lot, and uh, we've been going back and forth. He actually compiles a top 10 list of the NWA, and I would like to, excuse me, top 5 list. Oh, that's that's terrible, Ron. Sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, this is a live show. If you can't tell, this is a live stream. We're talking live, live, live. And uh, to be honest, um, I get distracted very easily. So when you guys leave comments, I will take time to read them. If you have any questions, I'll make sure to my to do my best to answer them. And uh, I am doing a simulcast with the uh, Instagram Instagram Live. If you guys. Uh, if it's easier at work to watch from Instagram, feel free to check that out. But the show is here on YouTube. That's the uh, it's supposed to be the exclusive home, but here I am cheating with uh, Instagram. So that makes me uh, a polygamist, I guess. Um, first and foremost, the unofficial NWA Top 5, as uh, reported by Gordon Soli's liver. Um, thanks. Yeah, Lamb, uh, thank you. At... The Alliance blog on Instagram. I could sure use some more uh, follows and likes. So if you guys are on Instagram and you do enjoy the NWA, hey, why not give me a follow and see some of the cool stuff that I post there? Um, so for Eddie's uh, top five, of course, Nick Aldis is our world's heavyweight champion. Whether you stand with him or not, he is the man who holds the 10 pounds of gold. Uh, Adam Pierce's sweet Charlotte. Adam coined that phrase. Uh, next, he has Aaron Stevens, our NWA national champion, as the number one contender for the 10 pounds of gold. Next up would be Eli Drake. Third on his list is Marty Skrull. Fourth on that list would be Tim Storm. And rounding out the list would be Ricky Starks. Now, something I wanted to bring up to attention is um, Ricky Starks is between his championship wrestling from Hollywood and NWA uh, power appearances, Ricky Starks is four wins, one loss, one no decision. Um, of course, he, he did lose at the pay-per-view. That was a triple threat match. I don't know how to rank that. You could say he got a loss, but he also can say that um, it was just a non-standard match. So anyways, Ricky Starks is 4-1-1 one, and one in one-on-one -on -one competition. Nobody in the NWA has a record as good as Ricky Starks. Maybe maybe the question mark who is absent on this list. Tim Storm. Well, Tim Storm is 0-1. Uh, the last 
uh, victory he had in the NWA, I believe, came at the 70th anniversary show. Um, or, you know, I guess if you want to count his uh, his match at Championship Wrestling from Arizona. But, um, yeah, maybe it was the 70th anniversary storm, uh 70th anniversary show where he beat uh, Pretty Peter Avalon because on NWA Power he had one opportunity to challenge for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship and came up short. Next on that list, like I said, we have Marty Skrull, who again is also 0 1. His one uh, NWA appearance was at uh, the Crockett Cup, unsuccessfully challenging for the World's Heavyweight Championship. And then uh, Aaron Stevens, uh, excuse me. Eli Drake. Eli Drake is 3-0. and oh. um, and, and, and really, he's defeated Caleb Conley and and, uh, and uh, Ken Anderson, Mr. Anderson, uh, twice. Uh, then we go to Aaron Stevens, our NWA national champion. Now, he had a play-in victory to get an opportunity to challenge for the national championship at Into the Fire. And then he won that title, but also has lost twice to Ricky Starks so you could see where one man's opinion is is uh, is a little skewed um, again I like Eddie and this isn't to try to take any shots at him um, he does have that list where a lot of people kind of feed into that and if you guys want to to be a part of that and, and have your voice heard on Eddie's uh, top five make sure you go and follow uh, at Gordon Soli's liver on Twitter and uh, yeah Make your voice be heard. Uh, now I'm going to read some of your comments, some of your questions, some of your concerns. Jason Newsom said, Episode 10 may have been the best episode of the NWA so far. It's hard to argue that, Jason. Uh, I, I, excuse me. It's hard to argue against that. Misspeak. Excuse me. Uh, I really enjoyed Episode 10. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, the show starting to hit its stride. I, I really thought Episode... I guess six was really good too. I, I think that was the one. Um, Lamb said uh, he lost twice. Championship wrestling from Hollywood. He is undefeated in NWA. Well, yeah. Uh, Tim Storm. Oh, yes. Okay, so Tim Storm lost twice uh, in Arizona. Okay, so so much for that. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to talk to talk about today was that NWA TV title. Now, whether you're a fan of uh, of the belt or not, if you're if you're a fan of the NWA creating another championship or not, night lamp. Yeah, man. Hey, real quick, thank you for pointing it out. I want to brag about these for a little bit now. Um, most of these autographs either came from the NWA 70th anniversary show or the Crockett Cup. Um, now, except for the Dan the Beast Seven autograph that came uh, at a wrestling convention that. Uh, was out here in Southern California many, many years ago, the Wrestle, Wrestle Reunion. Um, we got Blue Demon, Satoshi Kojima, Jack Stain, Tim Storm, Dory Funk Jr., Nick Aldis, Cole Cabana, Adam Pierce, and Brian Danielson. Now, I know Brian Danielson never officially held the NWA World Championship, uh, but some of you guys may know this. Some of you may not know this. He was slated to win the title, and uh, things kind of fell apart quickly. But that that's more for another show. Um, let's talk about the TV title. Like I said, whether you're a fan of uh, the championship coming back or not, it is coming back. And personally, I love this belt. I really thought that that title was a beautiful, gorgeous belt. My preference would have been red leather, but black leather is, I guess, acceptable. Um, sorry, I get, I get, like I said, I get distracted easily. And Ron says, how come the Tim Storm autograph has a two after his name? Is he Tim Storm Jr.? I think the Tim Storm, you know, that's a great question. <laughs> and I never really thought much about it. I kind of always assumed it was like supposed to be a, a tornado of some storm or something. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I don't. I don't know. I don't have a good answer. Um, hey, DKM, I see you watching us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you're a fan of the TV title, that's great. If you're not, I'm sorry. It's still happening, regardless of what you think, DKM. Um, now, 
There was a question asked on Twitter from Mike, and I, I didn't write down his Twitter address. Um, I think it's the Rattle UK. Um, I'm gonna make sure to put a link in the description once uh, once the show gets all said and done. But he was asking about the TV title and the fact that the NWA seemingly had multiple TV championships and, and was kind of confused on the lineage and how it all connects to the current NWA. Now the point I want to make about this first and foremost is the National Wrestling Alliance until about the late, uh, I want to say like 1996, 1997, um, was kind of like the wild, wild west. Uh, every single promotion had the ability to make their own version of the world tag team titles. Um, in fact, the only three what we would call BOD controlled titles were the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, the NWA World Lightweight Championship, and the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. Um, and again, until like 1997, every promotion was allowed to make a title with any names as long as it wasn't the NWA World's Championship uh, world light heavyweight world heavyweight world junior heavyweight and that sort of thing so as we bounce bounce along this path um if you were to look up title history light heavyweight excuse me thank you dcam with the correction light heavyweight not lightweight um so the nwa uh, promoters were able to kind of create their own titles and 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 represent the promotions anyways they chose fit and we see this most uh, character characterized by the tag team titles because there was an nwa world tag team championship in almost every major territory there was the nwa world tag titles in the jim crockett promotions the mid-atlantic area chicago uh, excuse me not chicago georgia i don't know why i said chicago los angeles san francisco and so on and so forth so these and the, the fact that they were nwa world titles um that weren't you know the world heavyweight or junior heavyweight or light heavyweight um meant that they they had the uh permission to do whichever they they wanted and so there were more than one tv title in la we had a beat the champ tv title and um i believe they had one in michigan the same with the same name the beat the champ tv title um, and these were often used because the world's heavyweight champion uh, didn't come to the market as often as maybe the fans would have liked or the promoters would have liked um, specifically as it relates to nwa power the tv title was announced and joe galley and I think this might have been a flub, I'm not sure, but he referenced the TV champion and Austin Idol in the 1980s, and that's where we kind of draw this weird, um, uh, which lineage are we looking at? Now, I think Galley might have made a mistake, um, and if not, then there's even more confusion, at least for me, but in the Jim Crockett Promotions era, there was an NWA national tv title which was mostly based out of uh georgia and uh, the georgia championship wrestling promotion and then there was an nwa world tv title which was um based out of the mid-atlantic area now the mid there was a mid-atlantic tv title eventually that got upgraded to the nwa uh well jim crocker promotions bought out the mid-atlantic area and then that became the nwa tv title and then they called it the world title uh, shortly thereafter um the national tv title was the georgia tv title and eventually became upgraded to the national tv title these two belts these two titles never shared lineage there was never a unification there was never a uh, a never a point in time where a uh, one champion held the other title simultaneously these are two very separate championships um the georgia heavyweight uh, the georgia tv title was actually founded in 1969 with the first champion being joe scarpia i think i'm saying that right the last champion being rugged ron garvin a former nwa world's heavyweight champion and uh that title uh, existed from 1969 to 1985 meaning the title existed for 16 years on the list of former notable champions, you had Nick Bockwinkel, 
uh, Bullet Bob Armstrong, Ole Anderson, Blackjack Lanza, Lanza, excuse me, Barry's dad. You had uh, Thunderbolt Patterson, the aforementioned Austin Idol, Tommy Rich, Terry Taylor, Kevin Sullivan, the Iron Sheik, and Jake the Snake Roberts, just to name a few of them. That was the national TV title. Again, that was based out of uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling. Now, when we talk about Jim Crockett promotions, they too had their TV title that had uh, about 17 years of an existence. Their first champion was crowned in 1974 with Danny Miller. And then when you go throughout the years, you have guys like Ivan Koloff, Paul Jones. Oh, you're right, guys. I'm sorry. I said, uh, thanks, DK, for the save. I said Lanza was <laughs> was Wyndham's dad. No, that was Mulligan. My bad. Thank you for the save, DK. Uh, I misspoke. Um, so going back to that list, we have Ivan Koloff, uh, Paul Jones, the Nature Boy, Rick Woo Flair, uh, Angelo Mosca, Greg Valentine, Rufus Jones, Ricky Steamboat, Baron Von Raschke, Roddy Piper. I named my daughter Piper. Uh, Ron, the Outlaw Bass. I should have said that better. Outlaw Ron Bass. Mike Rotundo, Dirty Dick Slater, the Great Kabuki, Tolly Blanchard, Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, uh, Arn Anderson, Nikita Koloff. Uh, Rick Steiner, Sting, the Great Muda, and the last champion being Tom Zink, the Z-Man, in 1991. So again, two very different lineages, two different titles. Um, there was a huge separation. Of course, Georgia Championship Wrestling and Jim Crockett Promotions, so many people uh, want to bring those things together, but they just weren't. It wasn't the same lineage. So when Joe Galley mentioned Austin Idol as being a former TV champion, I definitely think he misspoke. Um... As it pertains to the National Wrestling Alliance of yesteryear, a lot of the what we would call BOD-controlled titles, meaning the North American Championship, the National Championship, the NWA Tag Team titles, um, kind of followed that Jim Crockett Promotions era. Like they, they kind of drew the lineage from the most popular version of the NWA, which would have been Jim Crockett Promotions. So one could only assume the fact that they brought out Nikita Koloff and the fact that they're using this version of the title makes me believe that uh, Galley misspoke and the title that they're tying their lineage to would be the actual NWA World TV Championship. And uh, we'll see how that plays out here soon. Now I'm gonna take a, take a pause to read your guys' comments and to see what's going on here in the chat room. So uh, the night lamp says the TV title looks great. I agree, man. I mean, look, here's the honest to God truth. And DKM knows this more than anybody. I love the NWA TV title. The red leather, the silver belt. That was my favorite championship growing up. It still is. I own a, ten, a replica of the 10 pounds of gold, but um, that TV title was always one of my favorite belts. And it's got to be red leather. I don't know why. That's just how I feel. Of course, it won't be because it just won't be. Um, Ron says, what do I think of Aldous being in the TV tourney? I don't like it. Um, one of my friends who used to promote for the National Wrestling Alliance once told me that the goal of the champion is to make money. And it's obvious that the more money you make, uh, the more championships you hold, the more money you make. And it's hard to argue with that. It's sound logic in terms of the world of professional wrestling. Um, but Nick Aldis should be concentrating on defending that 10 pounds of gold. What What is he going to do when he runs into a night where he has to defend the title twice? And, you know, that's assuming that uh, Nick Aldis uh, will even win the TV title. And what does that do for his career if he loses the TV title, uh, a match in the TV title tournament? That instantly kind of... Uh, weakens his reign as world's heavyweight championship a world heavyweight champion and i just want to take a minute to acknowledge my brother jim what's up bro thanks for checking it out on the instagrams uh, we're also on youtube right now streaming at the alliance blog you can follow us at the alliance blog on instagram twitter facebook tiktok uh we're also even on uh tumblr and uh definitely appreciate your guys' support and uh this has been a th this whole th uh, adventure here in the uh, covering the NWA. I've been doing this for a long time, guys. Um, 
I, I know there's a lot of guys who are getting a lot more publicity right now than, than me, and that's that's totally cool. I appreciate the hard work that those guys put in. But we've been doing this. Uh, Alliance-Wrestling.com has been around for over 13 years. So I'm quite confident that if you guys come to my website and check out my content, you know it's going to be as close to accurate as can be without my flubs. But for the most part, you're going to get good information and hopefully good content. Um, more of your questions. Uh, you guys are just answering more. Brian Cervantes, one of our most recent subscribers, Brian Cervantes says NWA, and absolutely, man, the NWA is what we're all about here. We're talking NWA. That's what we do. That's who we are. That's what we've been doing for 13 years. Um, Lamb says, uh, and one of them became the WCW television title, right? What a confusing lineage. Yes. The WCW TV title actually was the Jim Crockett TV title. Now, um, once the WCW and NWA ceased uh, their working relationship, uh, whatever titles that WCW had controlled are still their WCW titles. Much like how Impact Wrestling and when the NWA uh, parted ways, the, N the NWA continued to recognize their champion as the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Um, however, Impact, TNA, whatever you want to call them, uh, crowned, kept the uh, same champion who was... Uh, it was Christian Cage who lost to Kurt Angle, but they just started calling him the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And, you know, even months before that split, they, they quit acknowledging the NWA altogether and just called it the TNA Champion, which kind of is what WCW did with their uh, relationship with the NWA. Ron says, the hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin, right? And, uh, you know, I... I grew up in a household, and my brother Jim over here would uh, can ex acknowledge and appreciate this. I grew up in a household where we watched both the WWF and the NWA. So when Ron Garvin came to the WWF and they they kept playing the uh, Frank Sinatra "My Way," uh, I, well, I always got a kick out of that. Scarpa went to WWF and became Strongbow. Okay, I did not know that. I should have done more research. Um, thanks for that, Jason. I appreciate that. Uh, Ron says, I was all about Koloff and Magnum TA for that TV title. Right? And when you think about those days, man, and where Magnum TA was and what he could have been, what a what a change in the scenery. What what a weird world we live in. Um, you know, I'm, if you believe in alternate timelines and... and and all that sort of thing. Could you imagine what world we would have lived in if Magnum TA never got into that motorcycle accident and was able to continue to pro wrestle professionally for years and years instead of having to retire early? Oh, just me? I'm the only one that thinks about stuff like that? Okay, I'll take it. Um, so let's get to the TV title tournament, right? Because uh, last week we went through a bunch of names, which I don't seem to have in front of me right now. But um, from memory, I'll go with Caleb Conley, uh, Ricky Starks, Eddie Kingston, as Dave Marquez said, the Dawsons, both Dawsons, they they lost their name, I guess. Uh, Thomas Latimer, uh, Tim Storm, Nick Aldis, uh, Colt Cabana, the question mark. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Oh, uh, let me, sorry, again, like I get distracted, and when I see new comments, I appreciate it. Uh, the Night Lamp said he listened to the interview with Lagan today, thought it was a great job. Thanks, man. I genuinely appreciate that. Uh, I've known Dave Lagana on a first-name basis uh, since the NWA came back in, into the spotlight. Um, I got to travel to China with the NWA, um, with, with uh, Dave Lagana. I got to see the world's heavyweight championship defended in china uh, whenever dave logano was out here in championship wrestling from hollywood when they were doing the segments with jason uh, james ellsworth or setting up the world title match between uh, tim storm and uh nick Aldis. i was there so i really got uh, I, I really feel like i have a uh, a good relationship with uh dave logano he's always been fair to me we've always tried to be fair back um and uh yeah he was he he offered me the opportunity to speak to him, and I jumped at it because, uh, well, it's not every day you get to speak to the vice president of the NWA. He's been on the podcast with us before, but this was the first time I had an opportunity to speak to him, and I, I was, it was great. 
Um, the thing about uh, Dave is he's very transparent. He's not going to tell you everything, but he's going to be open and honest with the answers that he can be. And uh, like I said, it, I had questions. I, I know some of you guys had the same questions. I asked him, he answered, and it was. It, I felt like it went really well. Um, I'm glad that uh, people are enjoying it because, again, that's why I do this stuff. It's I love wrestling. I love the NWA, but ultimately we make the content for you guys to consume. We, we make it so that you guys want to watch it. And, uh, you know, if you're enjoying what we're doing here at alliance-wrestling.com, again, give us a like, a follow, subscription, all that good stuff. And if you don't like it, leave a comment. Tell me what I can do different, what I can do better. Um, thank you, Kerouac, for joining us on Instagram. We're also live on YouTube at the Alliance blog. Uh, more of your comments. Um, Magnum and Nikita fought over the U.S. not TV belt. Ron, what do you have to say to that, good sir? Um, I think you're right, actually, Jason. Again, see, that's what I love about you guys. Uh, you'll let me know when I'm wrong. I, I never try to blow smoke up your guys' ass. I just, uh, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Zicky Dice, you're right. Zicky Dice is in the turn. Well, now that's the other confusing part from the show, right? Because his match w wasn't called a, it, it was a playing match is what they called it. It wasn't an actual uh, tournament match. And the, the thing is that they've, they've been calling these qualifying matches. So I don't know if this is actually tournament TV title matches or if they're qualifying matches. Regardless, yes, Zicky Dice is part of that group that we were talking about earlier. Um, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood News made sure to remind me that tonight's matches include Ricky Starks uh, challenging, well, wrestling against uh, Eddie Kingston for one of those spots in the TV title tournament, Colt Boom Boom Cabana. And the question mark also make up the second match uh, in that tournament tonight. Ziggy Dice looks like he raided the box of gimmicks and pulled them all out. It's a mess. That's Kerouac. Uh, yes. Okay, so... Love-hate relationship with Ziggy Dice. I don't know if that's the proper way to say it. Um, I don't hate the guy. I, I, I definitely... Thank you, DKM. Uh, another point DKM just made on the Instagram chat is that Nikita and Terry Taylor uh, were fighting with the NWA and the UWF TV title. So maybe that's what you're thinking about, Ron. Uh, possibly. I don't know. Um, but Zicky Dice is a... He's out there, guys. He is a... He's hungry. And that's what I like the most about him. He's very, very hungry. Um... The fact that Zicky Dice has wrestled in Southern California, Northern California, has been out on the East Coast, has wrestled all over Middle America. Uh, I mean, who's wrestling in Council Bluffs, Iowa? Zicky Dice is. Uh, he's a member of the freelance wrestling roster and, again, uh, active member of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and, believe it or not, was a part of the old NWA regime when he wrestled for Vendetta Pro Wrestling out here in California. So to say that he's been a part of the NWA for some time now is, is accurate. Um, do I love the gimmicks? No, I don't. Someone told me he looks like a, a Joey Ryan, a muted Joey Ryan, and I don't see that. I just think it's over the top. It's silly to be silly, but that's it's kind of where the NWA is now, isn't it? We see a lot of over the top stuff question mark is the guy that I think of almost immediately um, Kerouac says I don't hate him it's just like an early DDP and that's way too much you're not off on that at all <laughs> at all I mean if he had the cigar right and the booty babe anyone about the booty babe just me okay um, let's see you guys are saying Zicky Dice Zicky Dice yes 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 um, Kerouac says I don't agree I don't see Joey Ryan. It's just jokey, just like you said. Yeah, it, it is. It's silly. It's silly for the sake of being silly, but that's, again, that's kind of where the NWA is these days. Um, I think I saw a comment here earlier. Ron says, oh, okay. That's okay. I already answered that. So who do you guys think will be the next NWA world uh, TV champion? Who do you guys think will be the next man to win the belt? Now, this is the part in the show where I'm going to walk away for a second because it looks like my laptop's about to die. 
and uh, I don't have a charger here with me today. So hang on for just a second, folks, and talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The NWA TV title is neither on TV or a title. Well, that's not true, but give me just a second. What a day, what a day. Okay, so we're back. Um, okay, so what does this say? My, my brother says Tim Storm's going to win the TV title. And you know what? He isn't, uh, he isn't a terrible choice. Tim Storm would make a great TV champion. Um, and he's got a lot to prove right now, considering the fact that he was the victim of a mauling, a uh, straight beating by the group that'll be known as Strictly Business. That's uh, our world's heavyweight champion, Nick Aldis, uh, Thomas Latimer, and Royce Isaacs, the wild card, and of course, Camille. Um, Kerouac says, tell me that's not the way. Oh, Kerouac says, better be Tim Storm beat Aldous in the finals. Yeah, I mean, I why not? Uh, Tim Storm is great, man. Uh, I love Tim Storm. I've, I've interviewed Tim Storm. I've talked to Tim Storm. Uh, I've watched him since day one. And some of you guys, we I think we got into it a few weeks ago about um, him being in traditional champion wrestling, a former TCW world champion. And this is a guy that was a former NWA North American champion. Um, and uh, I believe he won the NWA national title at some point, too. So, uh, he's he's definitely somebody on my list. Um, I'm seeing uh, Ron says that's what he meant. Yeah, okay. So the TV title uh, wasn't the title; it was the U.S. title. Michael Manny says, "Hey man, I'm late today." Michael, hey man, you're not late. We still got at least uh, uh, well, <laughs> as long as this computer stays on, that's how long we got. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, Ron says, I have respect for Ziggy Dice, but I think the gimmick explosion mess is kind of a fair comment. Yes, it is. Um, Jason Newsom said, Arn stole Dusty's TV title when he was injured from the broken leg. Uh, Cage incident, NWA stripped him of that because he couldn't defend it. Um, Arn was claiming to be the NWA TV champ. I just watched that video the other day. Uh, Michael says, can't wait to see more on Aaron Stevens. I'll be honest. I'm probably the biggest Aaron Stevens mark right now. Um, I definitely enjoy what he's bringing to the table. I know it's a gimmick. I know it's goofy. I know it's silly. But he's been very entertaining, and I've been enjoying it tremendously. Um, Aaron, that's some good knowledge right there. Even though Arn was an illegitimate champion, they had a tournament in 86, and I think Dusty won it back. Yeah, and I, I think I remember the promo saying... Uh, I have the belt, don't I? I'm the TV champion. You know, come prove me wrong. And it's kind of funny. We've been talking a little bit about Joey Ryan. And um, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood has their international TV title. Now, that TV title used to go by the name of the NWA International TV Championship. Um, it had a, a slew of names before they finally uh, uh, landed on the United Wrestling Network TV title. But um, the way that they reintroduced that TV title uh, was Joey Ryan actually just started wearing it. Just started wearing it to the shows. And when they asked him, hey, what are you doing with that title? He's like, hey, don't worry about it. And it was a very strange beginning to the TV title. But, um, you know, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood used to be one of the biggest NWA promotions uh, here in the 2000s. Uh, they were defending all, hey, so Kellen centered, thank you for joining. We we're doing a live stream both on Instagram and on YouTube until my tablet dies here. But um, yeah, Joey Ryan was uh, was an uh, NWA TV champion at one point. Um, so let's see some more of the comments. Kerouac, if you watch the fire Into the Fire, I'm fourth row, and we mark out when he wins the title. Everyone else was pissed. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I don't get it. I, well, no, I do get it because Aaron Stevens is not the... Um, he doesn't fit the current model for the NWA. He doesn't fit the current model of the National Wrestling Alliance. There's a lot of uh, shades of gray in this promotion right now. Your baby faces, your heels, it's very hard to tell who's who. Until recently, I thought Nick Aldis was a baby face. And until recently, I thought uh, Eli Drake was a heel. But now it feels like those sides are both opposite. And maybe James Storm, maybe he isn't wrong. Maybe he was a conspiracy victim. But as it gets to it, um, Aaron Stevens from day one has been a heel. He's he's embraced that role, and he does it wonderfully. If you're into studio-style wrestling, if you're into the uh, you know days-gone-by style of wrestling, um, Aaron Stevens is your man. He's, he's a heel. He's a chicken shit heel. He'll do whatever it takes to win the title, whether it be the question mark, uh, making a save for him, or hiding behind a Christmas tree. Aaron Stevens is a bad guy, and that's partially why I love it. Um, I don't have to guess with him. I know who he is uh, right off the bat. Um, let's see. What else are you guys saying? Trevor Murdoch would be great, but Zicky Dice would also, no doubt, be a very entertaining champion. I mean, look, if, if, if we're picking our favorites, and Tim Storm was mentioned here twice now on the on Instagram, uh, I did talk about the, sorry guys, uh, SoCal and Censor said, just boosting your watch numbers and the waiting for the talk about the Beat the Champ TV title. I did talk about the Beat the Champ TV title. It was a title that was here in Los Angeles, and it was also in Michigan, and, uh, the, the idea back then was, like, could you beat the champion within a certain time limit? And it's kind of funny because the NWA is adopting the similar concept where there's six minutes and five seconds for these TV title tournament matches, and we'll see if that goes into the actual TV title uh, defenses as they continue to move forward in the tournament and crowning a new champion. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know who's going to win the TV title. My money was on Colt Cabana. He did not win it. I also think Ricky Starks might be the guy to win the title, but we also know that Latimer is in the tournament. We know that Aldis is in the tournament, and we also know that uh, with a new stable, um, Strictly Business, there could be an opportunity that uh, they will take advantage of these chances to win the title. And of course, uh, Aaron Stevens and uh, the, excuse me, the Shooter and the Question Mark. Uh, they too could work together to kind of get the question mark more advanced in the tournament. So we'll see. Um, Kerouac says, I hope Murdoch just keeps losing for the next few years and keeps demanding a contract. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like Murdoch. I'm a big fan of Trevor Murdoch. He was a, he was a part of the championship wrestling from Hollywood. Um, initial TV tapings from the Columbia Square Studios. He teamed with uh, Lance Cade, the late Lance Cade, as a you know, Kata Murdoch from the WWE. And uh, I think the goal at the time was to eventually put the tag titles on him. However, that show stalled to get picked up um, on a major network. And uh, eventually Lance Cade went back to the WWE. He was on one of my podcasts and uh, later told me he regretted that decision. Fortunately, he passed away um, shortly after that podcast. It's kind of sad. Uh, working... Championship Wrestling from Hollywood News says, wondering if Joe Galley will recognize the United TV title and NWA power one day, just like on the Crockett Cup. I don't think so. I don't, I don't. The Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and NWA relationship is kind of strange, and if SoCal Uncensored is still on here, he'll agree with me. Um, it feels like David Marquez and Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is quick to throw any support that they can for the NWA, including booking their champions, uh, recognizing those champions. Uh, Nick Aldis, Tim Storm, Cody Rhodes were all welcomed with open arms in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood um, and had some great matches there, but none of the Hollywood talent ever seems to really get a good rub from working with the NWA champions. Uh, uh, two two names in particular would be um, well Heather Monroe worked jazz when she came out to Hollywood um, and Heather Monroe lost the title now Heather lost an opportunity to win the title Heather Monroe is still one of the top uh, female talents in Hollywood but there is no championship there and it hasn't been an opportunity for her to come work for the NWA even though 
Billy Corgan and Dave Lagano were very high on her work. She actually was in China too. She wrestled against Barbie Hayden and won that match. And um, the NWA is high on her, but she just hasn't been introduced to the roster if she ever will be. Um, the other person I can think of is Big Tito, Bad Dude Tito, who had a great match with Nick Aldis. I really thought that uh, he looked amazing at that show um, at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. I believe it was Milestone. And uh, never was uh, given an opportunity to make an appearance for the NWA after that. So you'll see NWA talents to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Um, but very rarely do you see the opposite. In fact, the only guy who is currently working for both um, that isn't already synonymous with the NWA would have been Royce Isaacs. But you know, now that he's a, a former NWA World Tag Team Champion, um, it's kind of hard to say. Kerouac says, I like Murdoch. I just want to see him lose every match. It's funny he, how he loses. And the commentators say, give him a contract. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, I hear you. I, again, I... Shtick is funny to me. I enjoy studio wrestling. I have for a long time. I know it's not for everybody, but I'm I'm a fan of it, and I think it's I think it's good. And Trevor Murdoch, I think, is a great wrestler. I think this is the perfect environment for him. And uh, win, lose, or draw, I, I like to see him out there. <laughs> Kerouac, it's like you're you and me are are, are just talking here. Yeah. Uh, Royce is cool as hell. A lot of people love that guy. Um, he's always been kind to me. He's always been willing to take uh, allow me to take photos in Hollywood. Uh, has never had a, a bad thing to say to me or anything, so uh, I, I have no beef with him. And uh, dude is strong. Dude is stronger than you think. Um, he he used to wear a shirt called uh, that'll say um, I'll deadlift you, and I'm like, yeah, he he could pretty much deadlift everybody on the roster. Flew from New York to Atlanta last weekend for it. Yeah, I flew from L.A. Um, I, I don't think I'll be there in January, but I will probably be there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I flew in from uh, L.A. to see the Atlanta, t the first TV tapings. I probably won't be back until maybe February or March. Okay, so Michael Manning says, Two dwarfs walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jason Newsom says, Eli, the internet is television for the 21st century. Y yeah, man, you're not wrong. Uh, and we've, we've, we've talked about that in the past. I mean, the title itself, the name itself, TV title, is um, is just kind of, I don't know, it seems to be pointless. Um, it's a secondary title. If we called it the North American title, if we called it the... Uh, you know, the Georgia championship title, it, it would still be the same thing. It just has the gimmick of the 605 time limit. I don't think that hinders the title. In fact, I don't know why you don't, I don't know why somebody wouldn't embrace the history and lineage of the Jim Crockett promotions area. Uh, a lot of, there's a lot of love for that, uh, the NWA brand, the moniker. I mean, that's why Billy Corgan bought the NWA. He didn't buy it to create the X division champion or anything like that. He bought the NWA to kind of promote that national wrestling alliance history. And even though this is, you know, year two of a 20-year plan, his goal all along was to try to recreate a a national wrestling alliance. And Kerouac, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll meet up sometime in Atlanta or something. Um, all right, now you guys are talking a lot here. Uh, Jason Newsom says, "Oh yeah, we did that." Tim, hey Tim, what's going on, man? Um, he likes Ricky Starks for the TV title. Not a bad choice at all. Uh, you know. Nicoldus keeps calling him his MVP, his number one draft pick, and uh, Ricky Starks' TV champion has a good ring to it. Uh, Jason Newsom says belts, 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 belts. Yeah, I mean, I don't love the idea that there's so many titles, but um, I don't hate it either. Uh, Captain Cat, welcome Captain Cat. I would have advised against having Heather Monroe in the NWA. I took no pleasure in saying it. She's more suited for championship wrestling from Hollywood. I don't, uh, okay. I like Heather Monroe as a wrestler. Um, you know, I, I've known her now for just a little over two years. Um, she's wrestled around the world. She's a student of the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy out here in Southern California. They've been known to make some of the best wrestlers on the planet. If you don't know who their rosters are, um, you know, I'll just say some of the names. Uh, Brody King, uh, Jake Atlas, the aforementioned Tito, uh, Bad Dude Tito, uh, Ray Rosas, um, 
Jake Atlas is about to make a big uh, splash here in 2020. I think that's going to be his year. Um, a lot of the a lot of the good talented wrestlers from California have either been at uh, the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy or came from there. Uh, another name, uh, gosh, why am I drawing a blank on it? Uh, Tyler Bateman. Thank you, anyone who thought of that. Tyler Bateman is another good guy. Uh, from the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy. Rays, who is another female who I'd like to see in the NWA. Uh, both Heather Monroe and Rays, I think, would be good fits. But if you don't think so, why don't you tell me why? Smart me up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. See, see, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood News should be my partner on this thing because he's, he's always fact-checking me here. Douglas James was the other name I was struggling to come up with, and he's currently working for MLW. And uh, also an amazing wrestler. I think um, in Southern California, uh, SoCal Uncensored has a Rookie of the Year award. And I believe the Santino Brothers Wrestling School has has like five or six names from their school. Uh, Eli Everfly, uh, uh, Douglas James, uh, the aforementioned... Um, oh, see, I'm, I'm just all over the place. They've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, rookie of the years and a lot of great talent that comes out of that area. Uh, Michael Manning says, "No worries, Captain Jay's doing a six-hour marathon stream." No, unfortunately, this this uh, tablet's got three percent left, and and I'm surprised it carried us this far. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here very very soon, so that everyone can jump on the bandwagon to go watch NWA Power. Uh, of course, this is the pre-show for NWA Power. If you guys enjoyed this show. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Um, he needs to pull up a chair. <laughs> yeah, well, standing is good for me. I need to get off my get off my ass every once in a while. Um, so yeah, uh, that's where we're at. This has been a very fun eleven weeks. I think I've been doing it for for eight of the eleven weeks. I've very much enjoyed NWA Power. I hope you guys have too. Um, of course, alliance-wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. We have been covering the NWA since, well, since 2007. And if you guys have been a part of the journey with us, we appreciate you. Uh, we will be back next week to coincide with NWA Power, regardless if it's Monday or Tuesday. We'll be doing another live stream. I've um, been trying to do it all year, well, since the show started. And I uh, hope it's been a lot of fun. Oh, you guys are still talking. <laughs> That's great. Um, also, their plan is to get on cable eventually, I'm sure. The Night Lamp. Yes, um, famously at the uh, pre-show, the press conference for the uh, first episode of uh, the, the tapings for NWA Power, Billy said that the model that they're currently using is not sustainable. Pay-per-view is basically, David Lagana even said this, the pay-per-views are paying for TV time right now, for the studio, for the talent, and uh, it's not sustainable. They can't do that forever. Eventually, they do want to land on TV, but the fact that they are independent of TV allows them to do different things without really answering to anybody. Now, if, you know, they're, they're making money from the YouTube channel, uh, basic analytics. Uh, you know, If they've got 200,000 people watching that show, they're making money. Uh, how much nobody really knows. I, I saw a chart once saying that it could be anywhere from three hundred dollars a month to a thousand dollars a month. Again, that's not that's not paying for the t uh, programming. That's not paying for TV time, but it is putting money in their pocket. Um, Michael Manning says, "Crack a few beers. This is going to be a hell of a ride." I agree, man. I if you guys are watching the show, I mean, what do you think? Some look, I, I I follow the message boards on on Facebook and and I see the comments on Twitter. Some people hate on it, and okay, that's fine. There's plenty of other wrestling shows out there for you to support. But for the, those of us who are into it, I mean, I don't think it's really disappointed us yet, except for episode eight, which was probably the worst episode of NWA Power history, maybe the worst episode of professional wrestling history. And I've seen a lot of bad NWA because I used to watch a lot of Dave Marquez's shows. <laughs> um, what do you think of Hobo showing up at Circle Squared? I would love for the Hobo to show up at Circle Squared. I like the Hobo quite a bit. Um, there's been times where he's, you know, he was a former Hollywood Heritage champion. Um, Robert Baines, the Hobo, however, whichever moniker you want to use, 
he's a talented guy. Um, I think he needs an opportunity to kind of break out of just the Hollywood, Arizona, um, connection. But I, I think Robert Baines would fit in with the NWA, especially because he's got a, a gimmick and it feels like the NWA is looking for guys with gimmicks, looking for guys who aren't 120 pounds. They're looking for heavyweights and, you know, Robert Baines isn't a small guy, so I think he would fit in. Um, is there anything online that you can watch regarding the circle squared? Uh, Jason, there is nothing yet produced by the NWA for Circle Squared. I'm sure they'll be making announcements soon. Um, I know they're still creating content. They, they shot a bunch of stuff at the TV tapings. Um, if you're interested on in seeing what was either accepted or rejected, you could always hashtag search on, on YouTube that Circle Squared, and you'll see a lot of people who uh, um, tried to get into that, uh, tried to make ways into the NWA through the YouTube audition process um oh new so yes you're quoting Aaron Stevens I should have figured belts 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 yeah um and then uh one last thing Baines is working for New Japan according to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood News and uh that's pretty reliable I think that is that that's probably true so guys um I'm literally on one percent this thing's all gonna shut down in just a minute hello dog uh unleashed that's my friend Jaden not my friend Jaden, my friend uh, Lawrence Zirconium of Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators. Um, enjoy those guys. If you guys are in the New Jersey area on December 28th, make sure you check out dogprowrestling.com. They are putting on a show. Uh, I think that's Saturday after Christmas. You guys definitely want to check that out. Um, I'm running out of time here, else I would have you. Uh, I, I would give you more information. Um, it, okay, it is a Saturday. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Lawrence. And, uh, hey guys, this has been a lot of fun. If you guys want to see that again, make sure you hit like, subscribe, share. Uh, you know, we've been covering the NWA for the last 13 years. We're going to keep doing that into the new year. Um, please follow us on all social medias, especially Instagram, and that's at the Alliance Blog. Uh, we're also on Twitch. In the new year, when Retromania comes out, we'll be live streaming on uh, Twitch, talking about the NWA and playing some 16 bit wrestling game. And, uh, Everyone, uh, hope to see you guys watching NWA Power. Until next time, I'll see you at the matches. Good night now. And uh, I can't turn this thing off ever. There it is. All right, guys. See you at the matches.